I never owned a handheld system growing up, which means that I missed out on plenty of classic Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games. I've never really been a fan of portable gaming anyway, so I find it hard to even start some of the games I own. And that's where this comes in. I'm Square Eye Jack and today I'll be talking about the sole reason I bought a GameCube, the Game Boy Player. This attachment for Nintendo's sixth generation game console was released in 2003. It plugs into the bottom of your GameCube and is essentially a Game Boy Advance as it's compatible with all of your portable games while giving you the ability to play them on your TV. It doesn't use emulation, it is a Game Boy Advance using the same insides as the handheld alternative. See, this is what I think of when I think of gaming. Not hunched over looking at a tiny screen, not sprawled out at a desk looking at 50 screens at once, no. One screen, sitting down, relaxing, controller in hand, playing a fucking game. Although, you do have the option to plug in your Game Boy Advance system to use as a controller, but it's a bit awkward with the SP model. What else is awkward is that you can't just plug and play, you also need a special disc to boot the system up. Yeah, try finding the player and the disc together for a reasonable price in 2015. For some reason, we can't get the games in proper full screen, but at least we can choose the border. Wood grain, perfect for pretending you're playing Atari 2600. Game Boy and Game Boy Color games give you the option of changing the aspect ratio, but that's unnecessary. Now I could spend this video talking about good games like Tetris, Sonic Advance 2, I fucking hate this level, or even Donkey Kong Land 2. But fuck that, let's dive into my Game Boy collection. Up first, we have a 3-in-1 cart featuring classics such as Pong. It's Pong. What do you expect? At least you can play against a friend if you enjoy grappling a controller designed for one person. I couldn't imagine multiplayer on an actual Game Boy. Oh, move your fucking head! We also have Asteroids. That's about all I can say about that. I find it funny that the 2600 version from 1981 has colour, but the GBA version doesn't. The final game on here is Yars Revenge. Holy shit, I love this game. So good. You play as Yar, and he's getting revenge on whatever this is. Again, I prefer the 2600 version. The low graphical quality just speaks to me. The next game on the list is Spyro Season of Ice. I haven't played much of this game, but what I have played has been okay. The limited view kind of sucks, but that's handheld systems for you. And what the fuck is this? Spyro can't swim? Bull fucking shit. Let's try an original Game Boy game. How about Mickey's Dangerous Chase? We play as either Mickey or Minnie, but the default option is Mickey. The feminists would have a field day over this. All you do is run through the levels, picking up blocks and murdering innocent civilians. Holy shit! Mickey sent that dude into outer space, and the poor dogs, they're just defenseless. Next thing, Minnie's in a boat, and I have two seconds to figure out how to... Ugh, too late. Now what do we have? Jurassic Park? Jesus Christ. I wouldn't piss on this game if it was on fire, I fucking hate it. All of the years it's tormented me, and that's the Super Nintendo version. Look at this shit! While the main menu looks promising, it's all downhill from there. All you do is walk around, blasting the everlasting fuck out of dinosaurs, collecting eggs, and trying to figure out where you're supposed to go. Can I go here? No. What about here? No. I walked up to this light post and it started talking to me. So we've got that going for us. And what's this? An electric force field? Who puts an electric force field on their fucking roof? The best part of this game, I shit you not, is jumping to the beat of the music.
Until this asshole pulls out in front of me, great. Fucking great. Speaking of dinosaurs, we have Dinosaur. You thought movie licensed games were bad? Well here is a movie licensed Game Boy Color game. Okay, I took one step and I get a tutorial? Where have I seen that before? As you play, you unlock various characters which each have different abilities. This one can run fast, this one can jump, and this one goes... It's a pretty mediocre game. Where have I seen that before? Let's advance towards some more Game Boy Advance titles. Here we have Ace Combat Advance. To be honest, there's not much to say. You fly around and kill shit, you can switch altitudes, high up or not so high, enemies destroy your life bar quicker than you can destroy them, and the whole experience is boring. Do I recommend this game? No. It would be a better idea to strap a big, heavy, old school TV close to your face with a PlayStation 2 hooked up so that while you get eye cancer, you can play Air Raid 3. Moving on, we have one of the better games of today's video, Pac-Man Collection. This features four awesome versions of the classic game. We have the original, which is amazing. Blinky, Pinky, Inky, Clyde. Ah, oh, that always cheers me up. The next game is Pack Attack, which is a pretty neat Tetris Dr. Mario clone. Matching up ghosts and watching Pac-Man go ape shit is always fun. I don't understand the style of the menu though. It reminds me of a sleazy bar. Maybe that's where Pac-Man hangs out after fighting with Mrs. Pac-Man about how Pac-Man Jr. is a coke junkie. Pac-Mania. This is my least favourite version. It's slow really slow, and the limited view is a pain in the ass. I don't need to see the whole board, but three feet in front of my own fucking face would be handy. Finally, we have Pac-Man Arrangement. Cue the kick-ass music. Graphics are colourful, the stages are varied, cool power-ups, and a really fun gameplay experience. But I have one problem. Blinky and Clyde's names are switched. And who's this? Kinky? What a fucking creep. I bet he hangs out behind the sleazy bar waiting for pack women to walk by so he can flash his cherries at them. Okay, we have time for one more game. Let's hope it's amazing. The Amazing Spider-Man. Uh, who writes this shit? This game looks badass. Mary Jane has been kidnapped and it's our job to save her. The first fucking thing I notice is that the punch is delayed by a full second. To shoot web, you hold the punch button, making it take even longer to attack. The controls in this game are just so laughable. While not the worst, it's a joke. I hate games where the only mission is to kill a bunch of numb nuts with limited ability. He's supposed to be Spider-Man, make it feel like it. We get to the end of this alleyway and fight Mysterio, who shits gas all over you. The biggest problem with this game is the damage. In any good game, when you take a hit, you get some recovery time where you're immune to damage. But here, a single enemy can drain all of your life. At least when you die and continue, you don't lose progress. We climb onto the roof and fight this guy. Look at this. I'm jumping around like a fucking idiot and I still can't hit him. Come here, you fucking son of a bitch. Now we're traveling on the roof of a train, fighting hordes of bats. Damn, anyone would think Halloween was around the corner. Look at all these fucking bats. I reached the boss, but I died and got a game over. Too bad, really. While it wasn't the best game I've ever played, was still enjoyable. That's all of the handheld games I can take for one day. Maybe I'll come back to some of these games eventually and give them a proper review. Some of them certainly deserve it. The others deserve to be shat on. So while I do that, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and share. I'm Square-Eyed Jack and have a great fucking day.
Thanks for watching.